The journey to Lake Mios was an expedition into the heart of both mystery and danger. As I stood at the edge of its tranquil waters, a shiver ran down my spine, and my gaze swept across the expanse of this seemingly serene abyss. The placid surface masked a tumultuous history that had left an indelible mark on the land and its people. My purpose here was to unveil the enigma that had gripped the region for decades, the deadly secrets of Lake Nyos. The day I arrived, the sun was a fiery orb descending beyond the horizon, casting the landscape in a warm, golden glow. The villagers, their faces etched with stories of generations past, spoke in hushed tones as they shared tales of the lake's dark past. Among them was Nkwame, the village elder, his eyes a repository of wisdom as he began to weave a narrative that seemed to transcend time itself. Many moons ago, Nkwame's voice crackled like a fire, our ancestors spoke of a malevolent force that dwelled beneath the surface of Lake Nyos. They believed it was a spirit, a vengeful entity that hungered for the very breath of the living, waiting for the moon's descent to unleash its power upon us. His tale wove a haunting tapestry of fear and awe, and the villagers listened with wide-eyed fascination. One fateful night, Nkwame continued, his voice laden with sorrow, the earth itself trembled, and from the depths of the lake, a monstrous column of water surged forth. It was a colossal wave that engulfed our village, stealing the breath and life from those unfortunate enough to be in its path. The collective gasp from the listeners was accompanied by an almost imperceptible tremor beneath my feet. It was as though the very ground remembered the tragic events that Nkwame described. The story was more than just a legend, it was a haunting reality that had claimed the lives of hundreds. In the days that followed, I immersed myself in the history of Lake Nyos. I spoke with scientists who unraveled the deadly secret behind the catastrophe. A hidden reservoir of carbon dioxide trapped beneath the lake's serene surface. It was a silent killer that, when released, asphyxiated those living in its deadly embrace. The villagers lived in the shadow of this potential disaster, their lives a fragile balance between the beauty of their surroundings and the lurking peril beneath. But science was only part of the story. I sought out Mbutu, a man known as the keeper of the village's ancient lore. His eyes held a mixture of wisdom and fear as he recounted a chilling personal encounter with the lake's malevolent spirit. On a moonlit night, he whispered, his voice barely audible above the rustling leaves, I witnessed a phenomenon beyond explanation. The water itself seemed to glow, and from its depths emerged a figure, translucent and haunting, with eyes that held a malevolence beyond comprehension. Listening to Mbuta's account, I felt the boundary between reality and myth blur. Was there truly a spectral force residing beneath the surface, or were these manifestations born of a collective fear, a cautionary tale to keep the villagers from straying too close to the water's edge? The defining moment arrived unexpectedly, one evening as I stood at the shoreline, bathed in the silvery light of the moon. A low rumble reverberated through the earth, sending a shiver down my spine. My heart raced as I watched in awe as a massive column of water surged into the air, just as Nkwame had described. Panic gripped the villagers as they scattered, and I, too, felt the urgency of the moment. Amidst the chaos, Buddha's voice rose above the tumult, clear and commanding. The spirit awakens, he cried, we must offer our prayers and appease its wrath, as our ancestors did. As the villagers gathered to follow Mbuta's lead, I hesitated. My mind was caught between the rational explanations I had heard and the inexplicable truths unfolding before my eyes. And then, I saw it, a faint, ghostly light dancing across the water's surface, illuminating the darkness with an eerie glow. Mbutu, now an elder of great stature, raised his arms in a ritualistic gesture, beseeching the spirits to spare their lives. It was a desperate plea that echoed the rituals of generations past. And as if in response, the eruption subsided, the lake once again swallowing its fury. The light faded as quickly as it had appeared, the waters stilled, and a sense of calm settled over the village. Was it the spirit's anger that had been quelled? 
or was it simply the cyclical rhythm of a volatile ecosystem? As I walked away from Lake Nyos, my thoughts were a whirlwind of questions and uncertainties. The journey had peeled back layers of complexity, the scientific reality of carbon dioxide, the chilling legends of a malevolent spirit, and the unexplained lights that defied rationality. The lines between fact and fable had blurred, leaving me with a deep sense of humility in the face of nature's mysteries. In the days that followed, I delved deeper into Lake Nyos history, uncovering the devastating disaster that had struck in 1986. On that fateful night, an invisible and odorless cloud of carbon dioxide erupted from the lake, suffocating over 1,700 people and countless animals in nearby villages. The sudden release of gas was a catastrophic event that forever scarred the region. The aftermath was a scene of unimaginable devastation, lifeless bodies lying in the streets, families torn apart by an unseen enemy, and a community left grappling with grief and disbelief. The tranquility of the lake had transformed into a haunting reminder of the dangers that lay hidden beneath its waters. As I departed the village, I carried with me stories that transcended easy categorization. Lake Nyos had woven together science and mysticism, truth and legend, in a tapestry that challenged the limits of human understanding. The deadly secrets it held were a reflection of our own journey to uncover the unknown, the forgotten, and the hidden depths within ourselves. The disaster at Lake Nyos had forever etched its mark on the landscape, a somber reminder of the forces that lie dormant beneath the surface, waiting for an opportunity to reshape the world above. And while science may have illuminated some of the deadly secrets, the lake's legacy would continue to ripple through time, a testament to the mysteries that beckon us to explore, question, and remember. And so, I leave you with this tale of a place where the past and present dance in an eternal waltz, where the waters hold both tranquility and terror, and where the secrets of Lake Nyos remain as deep and unfathomable as the abyss itself.